welcome to you. My name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. This video is a bitza. It starts off with a driving vlog, which I'm going to throw to you in just a second, updating you on my Fendi made to order bag process, bag zip process. So I'm going to throw to that now and then we're going to come back and I'm going to share with you some things that I've purchased recently, including something in this big brown bag. I thought I'd give you an update on my Fendi made to order process. Well, I had a moment. Um, yesterday I was working, I was out for a lunch um, with a client and I was tapped on the shoulder by the lovely Joy who said, Dale, I'm a follower of your channel. And uh, yeah, it was so lovely to meet you, Joy. So thanks for coming to say hi. When you see me out and about, if you see me out and about, please don't shy away from saying hi. I'd love to meet you guys. So um, yeah, but it's always like, I'm always super weird because I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I, I never expect that to happen. So anyway, anyway, I also um, got a text from my fab friend at Balenciaga who we'd been talking about a shearling hourglass bag and the last season hourglass bag if I can put a picture in because um, I thought I don't really like the structure of the hourglass bag but I feel like if it was softened with shearling then I'd really like it and last year they had a white like quite a, a curly kind of shearling I suppose and uh I don't, I don't like the strap on it, but I do like it, you know, handheld or I think I could add, say, my Fendi um, strap you strap to it. Uh, but anyway, that one's not really in their system, but there were um, three new styles in their system. One black, one neon pink and one um, neon yellow <laughs> and, and weirdly, you know, whether or not your phone listens in on you. She texted me yesterday to say that she had received, unexpectedly, she didn't order it, the neon yellow fluffy hourglass bag. So I went to have a look at it and you can see in the mod shots that I'm just laughing because it's just such a funny bag. And some of the comments, um, I posted it on my Instagram story. Some of the comments were amazing. Um, my favorite, my favorite comment was, it looks like Samantha's dyed her pubes again. I stop. I'm not telling you the whole story. It gets worse. I dyed it. And I left it on too long. And it's the wrong color. Okay, you have 10 seconds and then I'm leaving. 10, 9. It's red. And when Smith sees it, I'm going to have to explain why it's red. 5, 4, Carrie, I don't think three, you get the magnitude of this. 2, 1. I'm both of the bush. <gasps> <laughs> oh, dear. So... Anyway, it's fair to say that that bag won't be coming home with me. But speaking of bags, the reason why I'm here in the first place talking to you right now is that I had a great FaceTime call with a Fendi client advisor in Sydney before the made to order trunk heads to Melbourne. So the point of that call was really to get an understanding of what the options look like and to try and whittle down the overwhelming choice that you have when you can do a made to order because you can make a made to order mini peekaboo you can make a baguette and you can make a fendi trunk baguette um, which are, tend to be in the men's collection and you will have seen a lot of them on instagram in the fendi spring summer hashtag um, and they're all kind of a perspex baguette and to be honest I was actually looking at those but now I have my Lafsha um, Lucite clutch I'm you know I've, I've ticked that box I feel anyhow um, I spoke to you in my last vlog about the fact that I wanted to explore mink and I still do so I have asked whether or not um, in advance whether or not the color that I would want in that bag um, will be available as an option because if it's not then that just kind of takes that bag off of my list 
And the color I'm looking for is actually pretty similar to the blazer I'm wearing. So I kind of liken it to the Valentino powder pink color. So that nude pink. Um, so I'm looking at, and you know, these are all spoilers because this is a journey, right? So I'm looking at the long hair mink, not the shaved mink, in a color like this without the Zucker print on it. Um, potentially with the ostrich in the same tonal color for the leather trim. Uh, in terms of the buckle, I have no idea. The buckles on the made to order baguettes are magnetized so you can actually order multiple buckles and change them out <laughs> just for a little bit extra. So that is one option that I'm looking at. And the other option, which I was so happy the client advisor introduced me to, is um, Stingray. Um, and it's commonly referred to as Galaché because there was a French designer who kind of discovered and first worked with um, shark and Stingray skins. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's affectionately um, named, or, or respectfully, should I say, or both named after him. Uh, and it is a sanded skin because it's very hard. It's like an armor. It's sanded and then polished, and it has this beautiful pearlescent finish. So I'm considering... Um, using that on a hard-sided piece, so on the baguette trunk. So they, they at the moment, are my two shortlists. I've got a, something like a fluff on my nose. Yeah, so they are my two shortlisted. But again, something else could happen. Oh, Ed Sheeran's coming on the 17th of February next year. Woohoo! Might have to go. I went to see Ed Sheeran last time he was here and he was really good. Oh, just on that, um, Foo Fighters are touring Australia at the end of this year and I happened to pick up tickets and uh, I've decided to go general admission for the full experience. I probably won't be in the mosh. Well, it's fair to say I won't be in the mosh. It'll be December. It'll be very, very hot here. And, uh, <laughs> you know, speaking of concerts and hygiene, I think this stadium can probably handle about 100,000 people. I don't think they will because it's a concert, so they'll block off, you know, at least half of it. But, yeah, we'll be in the general admission, rocking out to the Foo Fighters, which will be very exciting as well. Um, God, I'm all over the place. Oh, back to Fendi. And so after much consideration, not much at all, after I had my FaceTime appointment, I have decided that I am going to fly down to Melbourne for an overnight trip to experience the appointment as I would if I lived there. So going into the boutique, um, zooming in with Rome, being taken through some, um, the process, I guess, of design. Apparently they can do the sketches up in like a few minutes to give you an indication about what your design will look like. Then you have the opportunity to just consider that design and make some final amendments following the appointment. And then you sign a contract that says, we're going to make this bag for you and you alone. And so um, pay us a deposit, please. It is non-refundable and you are locked in. Uh, yeah, so that's going to happen in a few weeks. So that's a bit exciting as well. And in other Fendi news, because it just doesn't stop, <laughs> I might have, whilst selling a piece, which I'll tell you about when I uh, when I reveal the actual piece that I bought. <laughs> Here I was thinking I'm making money, saving money for luxury, selling unwanted things, and in the same transaction I picked up a bag, and it's a Fendi bag. Uh, so watch this space. It's in transit. Um, from far away so 
uh, it's been sourced and yeah it should be coming to me within the next I guess week or so so yeah I know right oh it's so bad the other thing I, I, um, I have my eye on is uh, Fendi uh, currently have a mink Fendi first in this beautiful baby blue and it's actually a lot cheaper than what made to order mink will be um, the challenge is that I, if I have the opportunity to do it through made to order I'd prefer to do that if that doesn't come off then potentially I will purchase my first Fendi first bag and yeah it's likely to be a mink fun bag so I started this year by saying I don't think I'll be buying anything from Fendi I'll wait for Fendachi and now I'm just like what oh no Fendachi put it on hold I've um I've got too many things on my wish list or maybe not even on my wish list on my shopping list <laughs> um so yeah I just love how fashion can really surprise you and it kind of takes you this is why I laugh about the concept of a wish list because I don't plan my purchases like there's a few things that I plan um, for example I've um, been to Burberry to upgrade my trench coat I'm waiting on my size to be transferred from Sydney hopefully I like the design on the buttons of it because a lot of those really blonde buttons I don't like um, so that was kind of a planned purchase but I mean I'm, I'm kind of kidding myself to think that I've got any idea of what I want because for me it's seeing beautiful things that speak to me and then just enjoying them um, this is all over the place this is my verbal diarrhea um, but one thing that if I do go with a hard-sided Fendi trunk baguette then that I believe will tick the box for me in terms of the Louis Vuitton Petite Mal so I'll be able to strike that one off my list this will be my version of a hard-sided trunk clutch because I've got my um, soft trunk clutch from Louis Vuitton so that could actually work out really well okay so so much news to share with you in this weird video vlog reveal kind of video but I wanted to show you a couple of things that I've been buying for the new season coming because either they've been on sale or I've really liked them and I just want to grab them before things get crazy so the first one is really boring it's as boring as a bra be 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 boring as a beige bra to me it's a white shirt it's a white button down shirt from witchery they currently have 20 percent off and i had 110 dollars off in rewards so i didn't pay anything for this it was 95 dollars after the discount and um my rewards took care of it what i love about it is these big cuffs and the relatively small collar so it's still quite feminine it's also quite a long shirt meaning that I can have that preppy look where I have the tails hanging out underneath a sweater which I really like so yeah I told you it was boring it's boring but white shirt upgrade is essential and I rarely wear white shirts on their own I use them as layering pieces I don't wear them under blazers because I find it too masculine I just wear them under sweaters and then blazers I know, weird, right? Speaking of sweaters, I've picked up a couple of really lovely ones lately and I'm speeding through these, I know. Um, this is from Matches Fashion. It's by the label Bella Freud and she does a lot of beautiful cashmere sweaters with little sayings on them. So I'm going to swing to the comments and we'll wait for Ashet Looks to watch this video and he can tell me what this means because I could Google translate it, but um, I much prefer when Ash gives me French lessons. So thanks, Ash. Um, this one, interestingly, even though it's cashmere, this is a note to those luxury lovers out there, it's made in China. It's made in China. So 
does that mean it's any less luxurious? We have this debate all the time. Bella Freud is a London-based brand, but um, yeah, their pieces are made in China. And this is beautiful. You'll see some mod shots in a minute. The next knitwear piece I got, I saw online through email marketing. It's with one of my favorite Australian brands, Age. And Age do sell internationally through a couple of platforms. So if you are interested in any of the pieces I buy from Age, you can buy them too, not just in Australia. And this one is a gorgeous ombre pink mock turtleneck balloon sleeved cozy sweater it's it feels so nice it's a mix of nylon acrylic alpaca viscose and polyester and that means that you can do a cold hand wash at home um, we don't need like really really cozy jumpers here for obvious reasons but i just loved the color on this and um, it really brightens a pink day and I thought I've got that beautiful wool Dior scarf with the pink tones as well so maybe I might need to organize a winter holiday just so I can layer this stuff up and the last piece that I'm going to show you before I get to the Burberry is this t-shirt by Age. Age do great t-shirts and I've always bought my true size and then when I was in store the other day I thought you know, when you have the say, the kind of shape that I have, buying your true size in oversize doesn't do you any favors necessarily. It adds bulk in all the wrong places. And I've learned a lot about styling a chest from Melissa Soldera. And if you don't follow Mel Soldera's channel, you should. She's edgy. She has a unique style. Um, not everything she does is for me because she's teeny tiny petite and she's got a teeny tiny little waist. But... She does have some great styling tips and tricks. And yeah, one of them is not to add extra fabric when you already have ample situation. So I bought this in a small and I would normally buy a medium and it has made such a huge difference. So that's a trick is to buy the size that you want, not the size that you the buy, buy the size you want for the style you want to achieve rather than the size you think you should buy. Okay, um, just while we're on styling videos, I got some great feedback from you guys on my recent um, 10 Ways to Style a Chanel Classic Flap and I am going to make a video about that because I learned so much from you and I think it's a really interesting conversation to have. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, yeah, I, th I think you'll really like it. So the final piece came in this big bag. It's not in there now, surprise, surprise. I have placed it back in its dust bag just for this video, but um, I have been playing with it to no end. So just a second. Okay, so here's the dust bag, not giving anything away. I uh, obviously bought this from the Burberry Boutique here in Brisbane. They've made a few improvements to the dust bag, but a few things are a bit like, mm. I hate the fact that they've lost their original emblem on the dust bags. Um, it used to be so extra, but I love that they've added these handles. They are very, very handy. And they've also added these little snaps to keep it shut. I think they used to be Velcro, which isn't really strong when you're talking about the kind of garments that come in these bags, right? So in my video, I mentioned that it's a trench and it came um, pretty quickly from Sydney, actually. So here it is. And again, it wasn't like this. This is the Kensington. This is the Kensington Trench. Now, um, I will insert some mod shots of me wearing it. I don't like wearing trenches the way that you should wear trenches. You know me and my style by now, it's kind of undone. So I prefer um, a few things that this trench doesn't have. And what I've discovered is, I think my old trench is not actually a Kensington Trench, it's a it's a um, a slight shift on the Kensington and it might be a Buckingham trench. 
Anyway, I, I really just wanted to replace that in the size up so that I could wear those kinds of chunky sweaters underneath, but it's discontinued. And so I had to move on and getting my head around buying a trench that wasn't the one that I had because I love that so much was very difficult for me. And one of the things I mentioned in my um, video was the buttons. Some of the buttons are really, really blonde and I wanted to make sure that there was enough of this tortoise shell on the buttons to kind of give it some personality or some edge because those fawn or nude kind of buttons that just blend in with the coat weren't for me. So I'm very happy this one has the button detail that I wanted. The other thing that is different about this trench to my old trench is that besides the buttons, which mine were black, also all of the leather, leather buckle details are all brown instead of black. Um, the color of this is honey and I think the color of my other one is stone. So I'm just telling you that, I don't have it here to show you because it's not a comparison video, but I'm just telling you that to say, I thought I was okay with change but it's taken me a lot to get my head around um, the changes between this and my other trench. And it's about that much longer as well than my other trench too. So yes, um, the inside is different. This one is a really cool fabric. So on the Kensington, it's pure cotton. It's really nice because if you live in a climate like I do, where it's pretty temperate, most people wouldn't invest in a trench because they'd say, oh, it'd never be cold enough for me to wear it. I wore my old trench and I will wear this trench probably from about April through to September. Um, I just find it a staple. I love it. And I think the more I get it cleaned, the more relaxed and slouchy and comfortable it gets, the more I will fall in love with it. But I've done some styling to show you um, so that you can see how I style the trench. Um, the price of this one in Australian dollars is 3490 so it's quite the investment. I've gone to a UK 14, my old one was a UK 12. I can still wear it open but I can't wear it with jumpers and things underneath and I did sell my Chelsea trench in my vlog sale earlier this year because it was a bit just too formal for me. Um, and as much as I played with it, I think it was the combination of the cut, which is much more shapely. So it comes in at the waist and kicks out as an A-line and it also has more tailored sleeves. These are just straight down trenches. I just think that combination of the color and the cut, it just didn't work for me and my style. So um, this is my trench. Uh, you will be seeing it a lot on Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should because that's where I do an outfit of the day nearly every single day of the year and I've actually found it really encourages me to be a little bit more creative and thoughtful in putting my outfits together. It also really helps me to rotate my bag collection because I have such a broad collection. Um, I can look at my grid and just go, oh, you know what? I haven't worn that for a while. I should put something together and wear that. And it's not for the gram. The gram actually helps me. So recommend that you go over there and give me a follow um, because as I mentioned before, styling videos are quite divisive. And so I think Instagram is a place where you can share your style and probably YouTube is a place where people, uh, you know, they don't wanna sit down and watch a 15 minute styling video. They'd prefer to see those pictures and just swipe through them and, and have a good look at what's interesting to them and swipe past the things that aren't. So um, as I said, my next video is going to be unpacking the feedback I got from the 10 ways to style a Chanel classic, la classic flap video. Um, and I just want to say in advance, thank you so much for your feedback. I am so glad that we have the kind of relationship where you feel that you can give me feedback um, as long as it's constructive, like it's so helpful to me and I really thank you for taking the time to do it. So I'll see you in my next video, which is likely to be on a Wednesday or Sunday. Thanks for joining me until then. Bye.